we spend countless hours together on the Bassmaster Elite Series stage, but I finally convinced LT to join me on the podcast. That's right. This week, Bassmaster Elite Series Tournament Director Lisa Talmadge on... I'm Bob Cobb for the Bassmaster. Welcome to Mercer. Welcome one, welcome all, friends, family, fishing freaks, freeloaders. You're all welcome here at the Awkwardly Honest Fishing Podcast that goes by my last name, which is Mercer. And uh, I thank you for coming here once again this week. Each and every Wednesday, we drop a new one of these shows. Whether you're listening to it here on YouTube or you're listening to it on some of our streaming services, we thank each and every one of you for that. It's unbelievable the way this channel continues to grow, 135,000 YouTube subscribers so far um, and growing by, by the minute because of you guys and in every other platform as well. So thank you, all of you, for doing that. I mean, I, I mean, I say thank you a bunch for it, but I just feel like people are so used to hearing people say thank you. But honestly, thank you for, for doing your talking with uh, likes and subscribes. And that's... Uh, that's how channels grow, and you guys have made this channel grow, and I thank you for that. Um, last week's show was a fun one, as it always is with Randy Blockett. I mean, I don't always agree with everything he says, but the cool thing that comes with Randy is passion, and not just from Randy, but from his throngs of followers. So I thank each and every one of you that came by here and commented, and hopefully a bunch of you subscribed, and hopefully a bunch of you enjoy the rest of our content. And uh, if you don't, if you only like the Randy Blockett stuff, Stick around. He'll be back sometime in the future. Uh, I can guarantee you that much. Because weirdly enough, I think Randy enjoys our conversations. I, I do too. Like, I mean, we're not always going to agree, but I think if we proved one thing last week, maybe it wasn't proved in all the comments, but we did prove one thing, and that was that you can totally disagree on certain things, but still respect each other. And... um I love seeing the passion from Randy. I love seeing the passion from his followers. And that's really what stands out to me as the coolest thing. How passionate we all are about the sport of fishing. And, um, and as long as our heart's in the right place and we're passionate, um, the sport of fishing has got a bright, bright future. And I honestly believe that. And part of that future is this week's guest. And somebody that I am really literally honored to work with. Um, I've known her for a long time in a bunch of different capacities. Um, but I think that what she's doing right now with the Elite Series, number one, it's groundbreaking. She is the, in arguably the most public official job in the sport of fishing. She's the first female in that position. And, you know, at a time where you hear people getting jobs because companies want to diversify and stuff like that, that is not the case with Lisa. Lisa is so born to be a tournament director and um, does such a good job at it. And she's so much fun to work with. And and I'll be honest, you know, when Trip retired, I was worried, you know, because it's weird. I mean, you might not see it, but that's a partnership on that stage. We work together. Like if that person's not on their job. I'm not on my job and vice versa. Like we work together. And I, I started to wonder like, who, who can they put up here to replace Trip? Because it's he's an unreplaceable character. I mean, and Lisa's great to work with, man. I will tell you that much. Like it, it I never thought that I would get as comfortable with somebody. It took a while you know, because you're just so used to working with Trip. I mean, we worked together. I mean, I think we worked it up. We, me and Trip, spent more than a month of our life on the Bassmaster Classic stage. Just the Classic stage alone. Never mind all the elites and stuff like that. So, to think you're not going to miss that person is foolish. I do miss Trip, but man, Lisa is doing an incredible job, and um, all our tournament staff. I mean, the way that 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 it. They've worked around the Elite Series has been pretty awesome. And uh, I love having Lisa as the Elite Series Tournament Director. And I love having her as my partner on stage. And I'm even more excited because she finally agreed to come on 
the podcast. She said, I'll do it eventually. She she doesn't like these kind of things. So um, let's see if we can get through this together. Let's bring her out right now, live from Oahe, because she works harder than me and shows up before me and leaves after me. Bassmaster Elite Series Tournament Director, LT, Lisa Talmadge. LT, we're finally doing this. We are podcasting. You have um, you've, you've said no to me more than any any <laughs> other guest that we've ever booked on here. But but uh, LT is in Lisa Talmadge finally mm. here on the show. And thank you for doing this. Well, you're welcome. And I'm sorry. I, I, this kind of thing makes me nervous. Why? About, huh? No, I don't. I don't ever really talk about myself, and I don't. <laughs> think i don't know i don't think anyone wants to hear what i have to say i don't know well this is no better way to find out i mean maybe they don't i mean <laughs> but i maybe, think maybe. they do i think they do yeah. because i look at the way um you know from the outside i mean the way you stepped into the job that you're in and um there's a lot of people I hear all the time. Like people are like, I really like LT, but tell me about her. They don't know anything yeah. about you. Um, but first of all, before we even get into your past and everything, how do you think you're, you're doing at the job? How's it been going? You know, you've had it for a while now, tournament director of the elite series. And uh, how are you, how do you feel it has gone so far? Uh, I mean, I haven't got fired yet. So that's, a, that's a good start. No, I mean, I think it's going well. I mean, every day I'm constantly learning and what I should and shouldn't do. Um, but I think for the most part, it's going well. Yeah, no, I think it's going very well. And I think you you got tested a lot early with weather and different things like that. But before we get into you as the tournament director, tell me about yourself. Where did you grow? Like People don't know anything about LT. So how... Did you end up the first female tournament director in arguably the most public job in fishing? Well, uh, I guess all the way back, I, I, I don't even know where to start. Like, where should I start? Well, I mean, wh- wh- where, where did you grow up? <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> when did you first fall in love with fishing or do you even like it? I mean, I think it would be awesome if you were like, no, I hate fish. It's just a gig. <laughs> no. Uh, when I was younger, my dad used to take my brother and I. Um, so when this, my, my parents uh, divorced when I was at a young age. And so she would send us to our dads in, t- in Texas. And so we spent the summer, my brother and I spent the summer fishing with him. We would go, you know, lakes all over. So I was just kind of, in the boat and I just learned how to fish from my dad and my brother. Um, and, and then my mom, it was, we were on the lake with her skiing. So we, so I'm, I'm just used to being on the lake. It's like the most comfortable place for me. When I come to a lake, I feel the most peace. And it's funny if I'm on a boat is when I'm the most relaxed ever. I mean, I could take the best naps on a boat, (laughs) but I mean, Go See, ahead. water skied, too. Yes. Like, mm-hmm. th- this I did not know about you. Uh, is this something you still do? Thing. I haven't done it in a while. I, I mean, this job is very consuming, so. I feel like we could busy. make it part of this job. I mean, I'd love to introduce you at the Classic this year at Takeoff. And here's your tournament director. <laughs> and you, you can come wakeboarding in, I'm sure. Right, right. Would arrange that. <laughs> So how did you end up working in the fishing industry? Was that because this isn't your first job in the fishing industry, but was that on purpose or did just growing up around it, just opportunities came your way? So back in the day, uh, I used to fish what was called the Federation. Yeah. So I used to fish that um, and I was a teacher. I used to teach. I taught first, second and fifth. And so I did that and then I fished and I would always help at the, um, nation events. I would always just help. And, and I just really loved being a part of it. And then one year, I think it was in Oh four, I actually got a woman of the year, um, fishing that year. So, and I just really just felt like I wanted to, to be 
in part of the fishing industry and I was young at the time. So I just sent out my resume to bass and um, you remember Don Corcoran? Yeah. He got, he got it and sent it to uh, Bruce Mathis and they flew me in and hired me to be one of the, uh, it was called the ESPN outdoor Bassmaster weekend series tournament managers. So in 04, I started that. So had you, managed any tournaments previous to that or you started at bass i started at bass but it was funny because uh bruce when he was talking to me or interviewing me he would say you'd be perfect for it because he's all when you look at the anglers just look at them like you're they're your fifth graders <laughs> and so <laughs> are fifth graders tougher to deal with or, or are elite series pros tougher to deal with uh i would say elites they're yeah. tougher well, and more yeah. of them have cell phones than fifth graders. I mean, I know a lot of fifth graders have cell phones nowadays, but they can probably track you down a little better, the Elite Series pros. Right. But it's so funny whenever, when I came out for my first event, um, it, was, there was a, it was an open at Okeechobee. And this was in 2004. It was in November. And I went out and I'm kind of just observing. And I walked behind the trailer and Chris Bose was back there. And there were several anglers and they were arguing about, he was on my water versus what his water and it was getting heated. And I was like, Oh my gosh, what did I get myself into? You know, <laughs> like, can I go home? But I told myself if I'm going to pick myself up, you know, I lived in Albuquerque, New Mexico. If I'm going to move all the way out here for a job, I need to give it six months. And so I did. And, and I ended up really loving it. So what, what, what do you love about, that lifestyle or that job? I just like being part of the whole competition part of it. And I mean, you, when you walk out on the dock and you see everybody's faces and they're just so excited and it just, it's just, I don't know. It's just really uplifting to me to see that they're getting to, it's like, I'm part of their, their, I guess their passion and, and I get to experience like what they're feeling and what they're going through on a daily basis. And I just love it. Yeah. Well, what's your favorite part about the job now? Like, is there any things that you, you know what I mean? Like, like I mean, I, I, what do you like at a tournament? What is your favorite kind of moments? You, you know what I mean? Like, is it giving away the trophy? What, what are the things that stand out to you? My two fa Okay. So I have several. So take off. I love takeoff yeah. um, that. I mean, that's, that's just the best part. Uh, and then when you do the top 10, that's, I love that part. I mean, that always gives me goosebumps. Just, I mean, it's so exciting. And then I love handing off the trophy. So sometimes whenever I have to give it to the host hand it off, I'm not real happy, but. <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, you get you get your fair share of events to give. I do, I do. I'm just kidding. But no, I love that part. Yeah, and, no, and I figured it would be something like that because I mean that that's a, and I I get where you're coming from because for me it's it's just cool to be part of of something that like I grew up loving. I grew up loving bass, and and at one point in my life, I felt like that's what I wanted to do. And then I realized ah, it's not really what I want to do. And I kind of went off and did the TV thing, but I love our gig because it brings me back to, you know what I mean? Every I worked for 10 classics before I ever worked for bass. And every year I'd be at the classic and I'd be sitting there and I'd be like, did I really screw up focusing on TV and not, not that I think I could have dominated tournaments, but you think you could have made a few classics or something like that. And then lo and behold, through a turn of events, I end up back with bass. So it's, it's just, I, just, I it's hard to explain, but I do think we have two of the coolest gigs in the entire sport. We, do. we really do. We do. Um, and, um, it, and I think that's one of the cool things about bass with all of our guys, you know what I mean? Like it, it whether it be the anglers, whether it be the camera folks, whether it be tournament staff, I mean, everybody enjoys their job and it, it's an ex, it is exciting thing. But there's there's every once in a while, this, these crappy things happen like weather and stuff like that. And then all of a sudden, nobody gets to even focus on their job and they just stare at you and the other yeah. tournament directors. Is that what does that feel like when you wake up in the morning and you're like, I might have to make a call today? 
I know. I mean, I start looking at the weather. I mean, several days before I even get to an event, like right now I'm already looking at the wind for Thursday and, but it keeps changing. So I'm just hoping that the winds will um, lighten up and it won't, you know, end up where we had to cancel. Um, my, my thing is I, I do worry about it, but my job ultimately is to uh, keep everyone safe, keep the anglers safe and actually, you know, protect them from themselves because they're competitors. They're going to go. If I say go, they're going to go. And, yeah. and so ultimately, I mean, I just have to, if, if I feel good about it, it's a, you know, it's on my conscience. So if I feel good that I feel, think they'll be safe, then I'll send them. But if not, I can't, I mean, I can't, it's, you know, safety first. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, and it's never, I don't think you're ever going to make the right decision for everybody, no matter, you know, it's very rare. Is it unanimous? You know, no matter how bad it is, there is somebody who's like, we should be out there. They are chewing oh, yeah, right for now. Sure. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And they're so mad that they're, they're not going. And I mean, I understand. And the, the that's the last thing we want to do is, is cancel or postpone. I mean, that, puts more work on us actually. So, I mean, I think some people think we like doing that, but we absolutely despise it. I mean, we want them to go just as much as they want to go. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it, um, what goes into a decision like that? Who, who's involved in that when, when it all comes down, is it tournament department or do you guys have to meet with local authorities and then meet with people, you know, chasing the crew back in, in Birmingham or how many people are involved in a decision like that? Well, um, first off, you know, Chris and I will sit down and, you know, I spend the time working with local authorities when it comes to uh, what they expect, you know, for weather coming in. And, you know, I let Chris know this is what, you know, what is projected and we just talk about it. Um, and then we, try to bring in uh, communications and I mean, first let me back up first, you know, he and I will make the decision together um, if we think it's safe to go or not after we've done our research. Yeah. And then we bring in like communications then we bring in the host and we, and we let them know this is what we're thinking, but we kind of do that the night before the day before. Uh, if we know something's coming that, could possibly postpone a day or something. We, we, we let everybody know that we are looking at this and just be prepared. So when we're calling you at six in the morning to let you know, just be ready. Yeah. So it's, uh -huh. it's, you got to stay on top of it all the days leading into it. Uh, it's not, it's yes. not, not something that just, you know what I mean? Yeah, like that, those decisions don't happen easy. No, they don't. And in 20, was it 2020? It just seemed like it happened every single event. <laughs> it was, <laughs> give me a break. <laughs> yeah. There is some seasons. It's weird. It, it, it is it so is. weird where it, it, it goes on, on a streak, but um, so I'm horrible at interviewing people. I totally jumped past. So you worked for the lady. Was it, was it the, what was the official name of, of the, um, was it the, the weekend series? Was it the weekend series or I yeah. think it started with the ladies series? No, the, um, I worked for the ESPN outdoor Bassmaster weekend series. Oh, okay. Okay. See, see, I'm totally bad at this. See now it was, a boater, it was a boater co-angler. Yeah. So how long did you stay there? So, uh, I think, ESPN and Bass owned it for a couple years, like three years. And then they licensed it out to American Bass Anglers to run it. And I yeah. really liked my job at the time. So I kind of just went and just with American Bass Anglers. And so I worked for them for a couple years okay. and I decided that wasn't for me. So then they called Bass said, why don't you come back? <laughs> Why don't you come back and work for us? And so they said, I remember um, Tripp saying, we don't have a full-time position right now, but just hang around um, and just work tournaments, be part of the tournament staff. So I did that for um, like four or five years and no one was leaving or anything. And I really needed a full-time position. And yeah. then that's whenever Shimano um, asked me to come interview for them. And I worked, then I worked for Shimano for three years. Well, then Trip calls me and he says, 
Chuck is retiring. He's like, we want you to come back. It's been a decade my- now, but we finally, <laughs> we, thanks for sticking with us for a decade. We finally have a full-time position. Is that what the call was? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's like, we want you to come back. And I love Shimano. I love the company and I loved my job there, but my heart was always with Bass. So yeah. whenever he said to come back, there was no question. So when he brought you back, Chuck was leaving, and that was the year where you you kind of traveled. I mean, tri- Chip and Trip and Chuck, like I really worried when Chuck left because they were so you know you would never see one without the other. And mm-hmm. um, but to slide into Chuck's shoes and travel with Trip for a year, not only a great lesson I would imagine, but uh-huh. a total adventure. What was it like to hang with Trip? as much as you did in that, that year leading up to you finally getting this job. Right. I mean, we, I mean, cause we drove to every tournament yeah. together. Um, I, I love trip. He, a lot of people don't know him the way, like I know him. Um, cause you, you, when you guys see him, he's all serious and stuff, but he is hilarious. He's actually pretty funny. Uh, so I actually really enjoyed working with him. I learned so much from him. It was so funny because we would be driving down the road and I was just constantly, what did you do in this situation? What do you do in this one? What do you do in this one? He's like, you got to quit badgering me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> no, Lisa. So. <laughs> uh, he is uh, I, one of a kind, though. But like, I mean, yes no better person to learn from, but, but Mm -hmm. it, uh, it also, what a weird transition, like from trip to you, when you look at it, you guys are so different, you know, in in so many ways, but so will I expect as you stay in this career that you're just going to get a lot more serious? Are we going to see a lot more serious Lisa, in the future? I mean, I love to laugh. (laughs) I love to have a good time. So I mean, I, I know why he um, is the way he is. And, you know, maybe I'll be, you know, more serious like that at times. I don't know. I mean, we're two different personalities, but we both could get the job done. Yeah. Yeah. No, he, uh, you never hear anybody that doesn't respect trip. It was amazing. You know, right. the job that he, he's always done and man, like I said, you guys are in a position where you're always going to make the wrong call. If you listen to everybody, you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm, if, mm-hmm. if there's, and uh, it's amazing, like, he, you know, no ma- even people that he's disqualified, like afterwards, they've, I, they've admitted to me, man, I hated it when it happened, but I was wrong. If it had been somebody else, I would have expected them to get DQ'd too. So, um, trip had an incredible track record of making mm-hmm. the right decisions. And, um, and I think you do too. I mean, I think so far you you literally have been tested. Like you said, 2020, 2021. Like we've had so many different weird weather things and so many things uh-huh. to juggle. Um, I think you've been tested a lot. Um, and I think you're you you're great at, at your job. But do you ever stop to think that you're the first female ever to do it? You know what I mean? And and I think I think that. Number one, kudos to you because you're very um, proficient at the job. You're not getting the job because you're a female, but also kudos to you to get the job in a, you know, male dominated world that literally is the most public job. Do you ever stop to think and be like, wow, how did, because I mean, I think all the time I'm like, how did a Canadian end up the MC? So I would imagine mm-hmm. that sometimes it might feel the same for you. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, uh- Sometimes I just stop and, you know, I smile and I'm like, gosh, it's so cool that I got here. I, Cause I remember when I started that bass no four and I would look at trip and I'm like, I could never, never do that job. You know, just, I just thought I just couldn't do it. I'm like, I'm just not cut out for that. And so then now I'm here, I'm like, Oh my gosh, how did, you know, how did I get here? What did, you know, what did I do? And all I, all I could think of is, I mean, I, I sit and try to just learn as much as I could from the best and got a lot of experience and knowledge. And, and now I just feel, I mean, I feel comfortable right here. Yeah. But yeah, but I'm just, I always would tell Trip though, I said, it is a little different for me because, you know, I am a female in a men's world, technically. 
uh, that I have to really work hard to gain their respect. Uh, so, and I, I mean, I feel like I have. Yeah. Yeah. No, know, I know you have. Um, and, and I think when you see the comments people leave after this podcast, you'll be reminded of how many people think that you have um, the chops to do this job and, and you're doing a great job. Do you ever feel more pressure being a female, like being the, you know what I mean? Like, a, Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I do. I, if I make the wrong decision, I'm like, Oh, that's it's because there's, you have a girl doing it, doing this job when a man should be doing it. But yeah, I do feel that, but you know, I just have to, Eh, you know, all I'm, I'm there to run a successful, fun, safe event and, you know, try to do my best every time. Do you ever stop to think about how much cool it must be for girls that just, you know, the many, how many there is out there in the world that literally just want to be part of Bass and like how much more welcoming mm -hmm. I would just feel like, I mean, it, it, that has to at some point you have to think like, what? I mean, that's pretty freaking cool. They it is. It is. And, and some women, you know, women and girls will come up to me after an event and just say how much they respect what I'm doing and, you know, creating this path for other women. And it, it is, it's, I, I love it. It's, it's like, it's humbling and just, yeah, very satisfying. So how did you get here? And I don't mean what job did you apply for, but I feel like you've done enough in your life that you think of things in your head that what do you think the traits you have that got you here? You know what I mean? Like, and what I mean by that is I always tell my kids, like, you need to work hard. Mm -hmm, like talent mm -hmm. is, is just a tiny little part of it. You need to work right. hard and be decent to work with and i'd say yes. like and i honestly think that is honestly some of the most important advice in literally any any sport any occupation any way you want to get to anything in life what traits do you think you had that got you here uh, i would say that too i would say you work you work hard you always give 110 percent um you work hard when you don't think people are looking because people are always looking you take pride in, you know, what you do. Um, it's just, I mean, I just feel like I, I was passionate enough about it too, to really put the time and effort and, and I'm and also very diplomatic. So I, I mean, I can look at it in a way to say if an angler comes to me and uh, they approach me about some situation, you know, I want to take that where I really listen to what they have to say and, and work through it kind of instead of just jumping and saying no, or you can't do this, but really just kind of take it in. But I mean, really, I mean, it's just working hard, working hard. That's the, that's the key and being honest yeah, all the time, being honest, like, especially if someone, if you do something and you walk away from a situation and someone says, who, who did this and don't, I mean, you need to own up to it. Always be honest. Yeah. Honest, uh, honesty. I, it, it's stupid. It sounds stupid. Like, I, I could honestly think, like, sometimes when I hear conversations like this, I think, like, I remember being a kid. And if I'd hear that, I'd just be like, come on, give 110% and be honest. It's so, But honestly, that is literally the most important things in life. Like, everybody sees people with tons of talent that, people don't want to work with. And as soon as that talent's got, you, you know what I mean? Like in so many ways, but ultimately if you look at the people that, that end up getting the gigs that people want, and this was definitely the gig I wanted. And this was definitely the gig you wanted. It it's gotten through. I mean, there's no master plan. It's literally just be decent to work with and people will mm -hmm. want to keep you around. Yes. Yes. Have some integrity, you know? So What's the toughest part about your job? Having to um, find an angler or disqualify them. That's the tough part. Yeah. I mean, I know, I know um, for the most part, when a rules infraction happens, it's, it's, it's by mistake, you know, and I, I just hate to have to say you owe us or you got to pay this 
or you're being disqualified for today. Cause I mean, that's, that's a tough part of it. Yeah. Yeah. No. And it, and it's, it's not little. I mean, if you look at, if you lose uh -huh. a day of competition, uh -huh. if you lose, I mean, it, it's, it, it doesn't take much for things to go wrong for an entire uh -huh. season and what literally one bad decision, one wrong. So when that goes down, what, what I mean, how uncomfortable is that? Like, is it normally face to face a phone conversation or is it just whatever's available at the time? Right. I mean, it, it's just whatever has happened at whenever it is. I mean, it might happen where I call them or if it's right then and there face to face. Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, that's, that's why I wouldn't do your job. I'm sorry. I'd quit. I'd be, I'd be all in for all the like handing out the trophies and everything. But uh -huh, the second uh -huh. word it came to like, I got a D I hate that. I mean, I just, mm -hmm. I, I would turtle. It'd be a, it'd be a tough, tough thing to deal with, but it, it's also, it's what your job is. You know what I mean? It, that mm -hmm. that's, that's one of the, and, and it, do you ever feel the pressure of, I would imagine in your job, I'd feel a, an immense amount of pressure, especially when you first started on every decision, just because I'd feel like everybody's watching every decision to judge whether it was right or wrong. Did you feel more pressure at the start through that kind of stuff? Well, I mean, the thing is you should always follow all the rules, you know, and if you follow them, if I do exactly what the rules say, then, I mean, we have our little rule booklet, then if you follow that, then you should be okay. You know, you can just point it out and say, you broke this rule and this is, you know, what's going to happen. Yeah. So let's say next Saturday, I know you're busy uh -huh. for the next few weeks anyways. So, but let's just say a few Saturdays from now, you're at home, you've got the weekend off. What, what do you do? What, what is fun time LT? What, what do you do on a weekend? If nobody's watching, you can just go away and do whatever you want. The, what I really enjoy doing is uh, actually, you know, being out on my boat, uh, with my husband, we love to just go and fun fish, or we like to do couples tournaments or team tournaments. So, I mean, I love doing that and taking our dogs and just being out on the water and taking good naps on the boat while we're out there. <laughs> You're a big napper, by the I mean, well, I, well, it's funny. I can't nap at home or anything, but if I go on a boat, it's like all the worrying that I have leaves and I can just be at peace. And so you I would can be take a, a good nap. A great tournament director, but a horrible marshal. <laughs> you would be always sleeping. But <laughs> let's I go around LT. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the marshal program, I mean, that that is an amazing program. And we don't talk about those individuals enough that support the Marshall program. It's amazing. I mean, we, we have some loyal listeners on this podcast that are, you know, at most of the tournaments and they're Marshalls, but th that program alone is, uh, is an amazing program. Who do you handle that? Or is that handled through one of the, like, do you guys divide that all up or how does, how does that all get dealt with? Well, they, they go online and register, uh, but at the event when they're here, I, I mean, I do all the emails for them and I do the video briefings for them as well. Yeah. So I handle that. Yeah. So as far as um, if you look back to high school and everything like that, would people be shocked to find out this is your job? Like if somebody tunes into FS1 on Saturday morning and you're making a call about something and what, what would people that went to high school think when they saw you on the screen? as the tournament director of the elite series. Well, I mean, it's funny. Like my husband, he's, he'll get texts. He'll, you know, dude, I saw your wife on TV. What's up with that? <laughs> 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 you know, things like that, which is, it's really cool. And it's really humbling. Uh, but I was supposed to be a teacher. That's what I was going to do. I was going to be teaching. So yeah, when people see that I'm doing this, I think that they're, we're probably surprised because it's so different than what I went to school for. But when you think about it, all the things that I learned as a teacher, I bring it here, you know, to this job, all, you know, managing and 
uh, you know, you have all these personalities to deal with and how to work with each of um, all the, you know, all the anglers. And- yeah. I am so shocked. I mean, I, I, I've, I, I'm, I had no idea you were a teacher. This is, a, and, yeah. and I have a long history of not getting along with teachers, but I feel like me and you get along really well. I hope that our relationship is not yeah. affected now that I know that you used to be a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> um. Are you shocked that why did you leave teaching? Was it just the drive to do that? Like, did, why did you decide to get out of that? Was it just to do this or was it like, eh, this isn't all it was cracked up to be? Well, uh, I just felt like I wanted to try something different in my life since, you know, I liked being part of tournaments, you know, with the Federation. And I, I felt like I was young enough that if I need, if I, if it didn't work out, uh, working in tournaments and stuff that I could go back to teaching. Yeah. So that, what worked that out? Really it. it worked I out. It worked out. <laughs> I, I can't think... even imagine thinking of teaching now. Um, it's such a lifetime ago. Yeah. It's weird. I, I tell my kids that and I'm like, there's as you, and when you're a kid, you don't even think about it, but it, like, I'm like, your life is like 10 years at a time. Because I like literally look at my life 10 years ago and I'm like, yeah, okay, I kind of understand. But if you take 10 years for that, I don't even recognize that person. You know what I mean? Like it, like uh-huh. you, things that were so important to you, you know, different jobs and stuff. And then you look back and you're like, I, I, I haven't even driven in that part of the world since that. You uh-huh. know what I mean? Uh-huh. Like it's it, it changes you so, so much. Um, What do you it think does. the few, what, what do you think the, uh, the future of the elite series is, I imagine, pretty good. Hopefully that it will continue to, um, I mean, guys still wanting to qualify. I mean, it seems, I mean, it's going well now. And I, I mean, that's how I see it. It's going well. And hopefully one day we, we can get a lady angler to qualify. That would be great. Yeah. And, and okay. Let me ask you, why do you think there has been no ladies? Well, I think, I think it all starts to, you know, when you're younger, like if you're women are not really brought up to go fishing. Most women, I don't know, they go, they play with dolls, they go shopping. <laughs> um, they, they're not out getting dirty. They're not hunting, fishing. They're not doing those things. And so it's just kind of been the trend. You know? Yeah. And I think it's changing now Um, there, you know, more, you see more women saying that they, that I don't have to play with dolls and go shopping and those things. I can do this as well. And it's okay. Men don't just do that. So I think it's changing a lot. I think it is. And I think it totally makes sense to me. Like if you really stop to think about it, it, it's, why is there no ladies in the elite series? It's the exact same answer as, as you used to say, why was there no Canadians in the elite series? It's if you look at the, to make the elite series, it is the top half uh-huh. percent of every circuit there is out there, but no matter what state it is. So if you realize how many males try to make it versus and how many actually do make it, it's an astronomical shot. So now you take that and you shrink that sample uh-huh. size down to nothingness, really. Like you literally, you, you've got a handful of ladies that are trying to make it, but you've got right. hundreds of males uh-huh. that are trying to make it. So it's just a sample size to me. You know what I mean? Like it, th- uh-huh. there will be a lady that comes along and dominates. And maybe she's already out there now. She just hasn't qualified for the elite series. But right, right. I just think it, it's normal because like on paper, Everything I've ever read says that ladies should be better anglers, like they're more sensitivity in their hands and different things like that. Like there is literally reasons that females should be better at fishing. Uh-huh. And literally the only reason there isn't one there is because of the numbers, the numbers of people uh-huh. that, that that try to make it there and right. collegiate fishing, high school fishing, all that is is making it more uh-huh. plausible and and female tournament directors might be making it more plausible um i would think i i would think you know right. it would um 
it, it's weird. Okay, I'll give you another one. When I first started working for Bass, I mean, every once in a while, people would be like, so where are you from? And I'd be like, up north. Because when I grew up, I, I'd always heard, like, you don't want to tell them you're Canadian for whatever reason. And now I just realize Americans are just like, oh, you're Canadian? Why? Uh, <laughs> they don't they don't really think about it that way. But um, anybody give you a hard time when you first came along? You don't have to name any names, but was there some kind of breaking in periods you had to deal with, with some anglers or staff or anything like that? Or has it been easy? Mm, it hasn't been that easy. I mean, <laughs> for the most part. For the I most love part, the pause. The, mm. Mm. <laughs> uh, for the most part, it has. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. I think that's how every job is, though. Like, right, it, right. It, it's, it's weird, man. I, like, I... I'm going to call Chuck out right now because he put me through the, when I first started, I started at the classic, which I think, you know, um, and it was in, um, we were in new Orleans and, um, that was the classic with the, um, or yeah, we were in new Orleans. That was the classic with the mega fog delays. So I'm the new guy at the factory, right? I, I'm, I'm just showing up and um, I'm starting the Bassmaster Classic. So I didn't know like when I was supposed to stop or start or whatever. And they just said, you know, a half hour before takeoff, start a takeoff show. And I did that. Yeah. Well, it got delayed four hours every day. And and Chuck was like, well, you better keep talking. Better keep talking. Like I was up in the bleachers. I got to know. That's why at the end of that Classic, you hear KVD slams door on number four. Because <laughs> I had to do like an hour, like four hours worth of like, I interviewed every member of Brandon Polnick's family. That's how I know his family so well. Because I'd sit in the bleachers and just like Chuck was like, keep going. And nowadays, like if we have a four hour fog delay, I'll talk to people for a little while and we'll play some music and do whatever. But I had no idea. So I was like the new guy in the factory. And, and I think that it, it happens in every single job. Mm -hmm. It does. It does. I mean, but I can't say uh, it was bad or anything. But, no. You know, there's growing pains. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Growing pains. Growing pains are good. So what's <laughs> your, uh, what, what do you hope, you know, like when you look at, at the accolades that people throw around trip and stuff like that, that's got to be intimidating to be filling those shoes, no? Oh yeah, for sure it is. I mean, I'm I'm just getting started. <laughs> yeah. You know, so of course. What do you hope that people will say about you? What what do you hope stands out for you, you know, when you're when you leave this job, what what do you hope to hear people say about you? I will. I hope that they will always think or know that I. Everyone was treated exactly the same, no matter who they, who they are, by me following the letter of the law, all the time, and being honest, having integrity. So that's a great thing to be known for, especially in your line of work. Do yeah. you like small fish tournaments, or did you really enjoy? Like, I mean, I love the St. Lawrence river. I mean, I, I mean, I, it was awesome, but I would also think that in your line of work where you had to repeatedly pick up those bags, you might be like, screw this. Let's go back to orange. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought it was, I thought it was you know, lift enough weights to prepare for that tournament, but I wasn't. No, I was a little, I was a little sore after that event. So uh, maybe these next two will be a little bit easier. No, but I really, I, I do really enjoy the, the big fish tournaments. Definitely. I just have yeah. to be more prepared for them. Well, I mean, Trip had a very strict <laughs> workout regiment. Um, I think at some point I'm sure he did, but uh, Lisa, I, I really enjoy working with you and, and I thank you. I think one of the coolest things in the world and, and, Every time I say this, I always feel like I say it wrong. But I think at a day and age when when people are trying to diversify 
you know, that's the big story. You know, how many females do you have working in these positions and how many, how diverse is your hiring? I think it's awesome that, that companies are trying to add that. And man, we have the right person for the job and it isn't, you weren't hired because you were a female. Right. And that's what I want. The right yeah. person for the job. And I, and right. I just think it's, it's awesome. I'm just proud to stand beside you up there. I think oh, it's I really, really that. cool. I mean, I, I really enjoy working with you as well. I've had, I've had the best time the last couple of years being on stage with you. So it's been great. Yeah. Thank you for ma- Thank you for making it easy for me. Oh yeah. Well, I tried. I don't know. I, I mean, it's an easy job. It's fun. It's, it's, I mean, you're good at your job too, though. Like, I mean, all, ultimately, there's a lot of people who rallied behind you and wanted you mm-hmm. to have this job. And, but and I appreciate want- that. I appreciate that completely. There were several anglers I, I know that went to chase and, and said, you know, said a lot of great, nice things about me. And, and so I do appreciate all of them for yeah. know, all the kind words, but they wouldn't have trust me. This group of people wouldn't have said that for any reason other than you have the skills to do the job. I mean, you, right. you, ha- you, you, there's a, I mean, you're just, you're just certain people are meant to do certain things. And I, I'm pretty certain you're meant to be the elite series tournament director. And I'm sure I, I worry one day <laughs> the ghost of race. God, will be like, what has happened? We have a Canadian and a female up there. <laughs> <laughs> It uh, it's amazing what has happened, um, but I'm thankful for for Ray Scott for for plowing the fields and then making the, you know making the industry that it is, and um, and I'm thankful that you took a little time to talk to me. How are you still nervous about these podcasts? Well, I feel a little bit better now. So, I mean, if you ask me again, I I won't say no. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Good. It took a while. It took a while. Uh, okay. One random fact. Give me a random fact about you. We learned you were a water skier. What is another random thing that nobody would ever imagine about you that you're willing to reveal here right now? Uh, I drove a, an 18 wheeler truck with my husband for a year. We did the team driving. Come on. You were truckers. I did that for a year. Yes. Did you have a CB name? I have the uh, I have the utmost respect for truck drivers because they, I mean, they have a hard job. I did it for a year and I did not like it at all. It's tough. Did you have a CB call name? Did you like? No. Yes. You did. What well, What was it? Uh, Road Runner. <laughs> <laughs> Me, me. Uh, um, and and what w- w- what was your husband's call name? Uh, I have no idea. <laughs> I don't remember. I, I mean, I got that because I, when I told my husband that I would go do this adventure with him, I said I had I had to stay in shape, and so every every time we would get to a truck stop, I would run. Ah. Yeah, I would just run. I'd run miles and miles and miles. and You became roadrunner. So, and so that's how that started. But yeah, I did that for a year. Not, uh, not a lot of people really know that. I, I had, you were a teacher, a trucker, wakeboarder. I mean, so you're like onions. There's so many levels to you. I'm, I'm just learning them. Um, well, and also, so I don't just handle um, all the elite angler tournament director stuff. I handle all the CDL DOT stuff for, for bass as well, since I had that experience. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. See all these things. So I, I, didn't, to, I didn't, I didn't have to make sure all the guys are doing their log books correctly. All right. Well, cool. All the things I'm learning about you. And I think a lot of people learned about you. I, you said your name's Roadrunner, And I've, I, I have to tell this story because Every time I hear the word Roadrunner, I think of him and uh, the late, great Aaron Martins and me have a great Roadrunner story. And it was at a time. I mean, the best thing about Aaron is you could ask him anything and he would answer it. 
but it would generally never be the answer you expected. It would come from a total different direction. So there was a time when I was doing a lot of running and so was Aaron and, uh, and I, I am interviewing him in Zona. It kind of became a Zona thing where it's like, ask something weird to Aaron. You have to, you know, so we do a whole interview. He's leading the tournament. I think it was in lacrosse actually. And I said, it, the last question of the interview was Aaron, if, if I had to pick an animal that I run like, I would say I run like a wombat. If you had to pick an animal, what animal would you run like? And he, he like, without, he's like, I'd run like a bird, bro. And I was like, a bird? <laughs> Birds are horrible runners. What are you talking about, Aaron? He's like, oh, no, they're not. Roadrunners are <laughs> super fast. And I'm like, <laughs> in only Aaron Martin fashion. So, now I have two Roadrunner stories, Aaron Martins and uh, the lady I get to spend my time on the stage with. Thank you for spending a little time with us, and uh, I'll see you in a few days at uh, Lake Oahe. All right. Thank you so much for having me on. I appreciate it, Dave. Thank you. We'll see you soon. Thank you. All right. Bye. Who knew? Who knew? LT is a school teaching, truck driving, wakeboarding, tournament director. Uh, I, I had no idea some of those. And, and the weird thing is I'm now left with all of these questions. I, we will definitely have Roadrunner back on here again. Me, me. What kind of CB handle is that? That is the best. Roadrunner here. Me, me. I, I, I got a lot of questions for her. So I think we'll have to have Lisa back on here in the future because uh, literally, I mean, there's so many directions you can go. But I think... She's pretty open, pretty honest, and uh, I will guarantee you one thing. She's a big part of the Bassmaster team and somebody who I love working with. And I'm thankful that she joined me here this week on our podcast. So hopefully you guys are tuned in to Lake Hawaii. Pick kicks off Thursday morning, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday competition is what's scheduled. Let's hope the nasty wind stays away and that doesn't get messed with. And um, then we're off to La Crosse, Wisconsin for the last Elite Series event of the season. It is hard to believe we were already there. But, man, in the next eight days of competition fishing, a lot is going to be decided. Uh, the angler, the year title, the rookie of the year title, who requalifies, who qualifies for the Bassmaster Classic, and all that stuff. I'm glad I'm just the guy who does all the talking, and Lisa actually has to do all the work and figure out wherever one places. But I thank you guys for tuning into this show week after week. Every single Wednesday, we'll put a little hump back in your hump day. And hey, we upload something new every single day on YouTube. So make sure to support it and to give us a thumbs up. Subscribe. Keep the grow going at 135,000 followers so far on YouTube and growing every single week on every other streaming platform. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You guys are incredible. And no matter how many times I say thank you, it's not enough. I appreciate you guys coming here each and every time you do. Enjoy being, have a great week, and as always, Bob Cobb, take it away. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Because Bob Cobb of the Bassmasters told you to. You hear?